All right. Well, so much for the fancy microphones and all the other plans I had. We're just going to jump into this thing. Welcome to Mr. Todd's crypto class, session two. Uh, based on the uh, data that I was able to see from the first video, most people watched about 15% of the video. So that tells me I got to step it up. And it also tells me that we all have the attention spans of a gnat. So <laughs> we're going to jump into this. You know, good thing I'm making these as much for myself as for anyone else. But there is a lot to learn and I'm excited to uh, keep the dialogue going. So let's uh, let's move ahead. And um, I'm excited to get more focused and get more uh, specific about some of the particular digital assets or cryptocurrency. So but this video is going to take us one step further before we get there. We need to talk about, you know, how do you even start investing in cryptocurrencies? So with, without further ado, uh, knowledge is power. I am a professional learner. I am not a professional investor. So full disclosure. And of course, I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own diligence. All right. Um, I think the main thing you need to do when you're jumping into anything in life, but in particular investments and in the case of a technology that's still unfolding, you got to learn as much as you can. And that usually means learning from other people, of course, as the image there kind of shows. So you may not want to listen to someone like me because I listen to people like this guy. <laughs> so if you can't see the screen, it looks like there's a Wolverine character on there. But this happens to be one of my favorite people in the game, uh, James. I just call him James from Invest Answers. He has a, his own YouTube channel. It's way better than this one when it comes to cryptocurrency. So head over there as soon as possible. In fact, close this video and go there. Um, but he talks about math, money, and freedom. And he's someone who, from what I've gathered, made his money and cut his teeth in the traditional stock market and other investments, and then saw crypto um, and has jumped into that and actually made a video for his friends and family to uh, try to encourage them to buy Bitcoin some years ago. And I guess he failed in that endeavor, but the video went viral on YouTube and the rest is history. And at this point, he's interviewing some of the biggest names in the game, and he provides daily videos. So I'm a big fan. I've learned a lot from him. Um, you can go deep there. I think what I'm providing here, though, is uh, more simplicity even than what he's doing. But once you get to that you know, next level of understanding, you're going to want to mix it up and, and definitely learn from people like James. So uh, full disclosure, he's someone I turn to, um, and to, to learn in this space. Okay. Uh, it's going to take work. It's doing your own due diligence. Uh, you know, you, no one can help you with everything. And as you can see here, you, you know, you got to be scrappy and uh, that that can be a challenge. So here we go. I'm going to help you speed up. Um, I think if you want to get into crypto, then you've got to just start dipping your toe in the water. And that's one of the most important things you can do. You got to invest in it. So 20 bucks, $100, $1,000. I don't know if you're a whale, maybe you have a thousand, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to, to put in there. But most of us have a lot less than that. And so my big thing is just get your, get your toe in the water, invest something. You're going to have to use a crypto exchange, uh, an exchange that allows you to buy and sell and trade and cash out digital assets. And so an exchange is basically a market or a shop where you can buy digital assets. And you'll always hear and see this idea of coins. But coins are just individual units uh, of, of a digital asset. And of course, you must convert your fiat. Fiat is dollars, euros, whatever you know your country's currency is. Uh, I like to call it filthy fiat because money is dirty, literally and figuratively in a lot of ways. Um, so you'll need to take your dollars, you take your euros, take your whatever, rupees, and you're going to convert those into um, dollars. And then you have a lot of options out there in the exchange world, uh, two that I believe are more, uh, more better, or, or at least more legitimate, uh, FTX, Coinbase. Coinbase is the most regulated. So if, you know, there are people out there who think that crypto is all shady and all that, and it's really not. However, there are people, who, of course, who try to evade taxes and so on. And they wouldn't want to use Coinbase because Coinbase practices KYC or know your customer uh, practice, best practices. So that means that they're going to keep track of what you're doing on there and you're going to pay taxes. I use Coinbase Pro. I also use Coinbase, FTX. But Coinbase, you know, 
you hear hardcore crypto people will say, oh, their fees are high. That's for lamos. Hey, you know what? Haters going to hate. Coinbase is growing. It's because crypto is becoming more mainstream. And in fact, Coinbase and these other big, more mainstream um, programs, organizations, businesses, they're going to bring in all the money to the, the space. So don't hate on Coinbase. So let's say you choose Coinbase and I'm not getting paid anything from them, by the way. I just have used them. That's how I got my toe in the water. So I'm just telling you what worked for me. Um, and you'll download the app or go on your computer. Some people get really serious. They, I have an old Chromebook that I've set aside just for crypto, I, but I often just use my phone. So you can have like a, uh, a device set aside for it, or you can just use your phone like most people. Um, so if you downloaded Coinbase, for example, um, then you would connect your payment method. And that's kind of the scary part. You know, it gets real when you're, when you're connecting your bank account and uh, you got to, that's a decision you got to make for yourself. But these businesses aren't, ex they don't exist because they're losing everybody's money. So um, this is the part where I would say, do your due diligence, know what's going on. And there you go. I hear my dog. I think he wants some Bitcoin. So then you buy a blank amount of digital currency, a hundred bucks maybe. And there you go. So then before you're going to buy something, there's things you got to ask yourself. What kind of investor are you? Are you a long-term investor, a hodler? Like we talked about holding on for dear life. That means you buy it, you set it aside. You don't check Reddit and whatever website every single second, like some people I know. Uh, are you a swing trader? Maybe, you know, you see that Ethereum's doing really well. You got your money in there. And then when you feel like, you know what? People like Mr. Todd and others out there say that we're going to hit a top. Maybe you pull your money out into a stable coin and you do some research and find out that something else is starting to do well. So then you move your money into that and now you ride that wave and then you might jump off that. And so you're swinging back and forth with these investments. And then are you a day trader? If you're a day trader, leave now because this is not the channel for you. I don't day trade. I know enough about it to know that it's like the crack cocaine of investments and that's a whole different thing it's a short-term thing and it's very stressful and very risky so for me i'm somewhere in between a long-term investor a hodler and a swing trader i learned a lot in the last year and a half and i made some money i also saw where i could have made even more money and that's what i'm trying to apply to uh, the situation moving forward so I think most of people watching this channel that are looking to learn and understand the bigger picture and then take it slow, I think you're going to be a, more of a hodler, maybe swing trade a little bit as you get more comfortable. If you do learn how to do the, a little bit of trading, you can, of course, make a lot more money, but it is more stressful, requires more uh, time and energy. There's a lot of different terminology. I'm not going to go into all of it, but you should start researching and reading articles and slowly but surely the terminology will come. These are some great images here. Uh, what you don't want to do is engage in FOMO where you're, you know, you see, oh my gosh, look at Ethereum. It's, it's going crazy now. That's probably going to happen later this year, maybe even just in a few months. And when people start talking about it and getting excited, um, it's not bad to necessarily jump in at that point. But when people are FOMOing in, as we say, you're more likely to not make as much money because it's too late by that point. So, um, you know, when everyone's talking about the latest meme coin, probably not a good time to buy it. FUD, I say this now in my day-to-day -day life, it's fear, uncertainty, and doubt. There's all kinds of FUD out there about crypto, about almost everything. Life, the media is FUD. It's just spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt regarding the situation, the market, your assets. So there's a lot of FUD right now about crypto, but especially since it's not, you know, it's down. Bear market, bull market. I think everyone knows that bear market. Some people are calling what's happening right now in the world of digital assets, bear market. The people I follow who know a lot more than I do are saying, yeah, maybe, but doesn't look like it. It looks, and is it a bull market right now? It looks like we're in some kind of weird prolonged growth phase that is like a bull market with, of course, the high volatility that this asset class uh, you know includes crypto trading terms altcoin that is anything that's not bitcoin so ethereum solana which i mentioned previously these layer one solutions all of those are altcoins dogecoin is a meme coin uh, it's also that makes it an altcoin automatically uh, it's almost like you could say like bitcoins here 
you know, the world of altcoins. And then I put meme coins below that. Not that I think they're, uh, they're bad, but they are inferior in as much as they don't have any real use case, any real business use. In other words, all time high ATH, uh, that's the highest value that particular asset ever reached. So Bitcoin's all time high is something around 70 K we're sitting around 40 K right now. Um, just to give you an idea. So they'll say, yeah, when Bitcoin gets back to its ATH or all-time high, you don't hear people say ATH, but you'll see it in text a lot. Fiat, we talked about. FOMO, we talked about. Bullish, bearish. Uh, forks are when blockchains uh, can fork or split off. Um, I don't know a ton about all that. I, I know that I pay attention to when things technologies are shifting in a particular digital asset to see if it's going to add value and maybe the price is going to go up. But that's something that maybe you can explain more in the comments yourself. HODL we talked about. And then cold storage is when you say, hey, I trust Coinbase and everything. It's cool. They hold on to my assets in hot storage so that I can trade them. But maybe I want to download uh, my encrypted code and stick it in a fireproof safe. And now I know hackers can't get to it. So you can actually move your crypto into cold storage. And that's pretty cool. And we'll talk more about that sometime in the future. So a lot of stuff there. but. You need to know the terminology, and those are some of the most basic. That's some of the most basic stuff. And it seems like a lot, but really, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So let's see if hodling works. Does it actually work to just sit there and watch your digital assets grow? Let's look at some examples. So here's how much money you'd have if you invested a thousand dollars in four of the top cryptocurrencies this year. This is the kind of stuff you always see floating around out there. It's either FUD or it's clickbait. But there's actually, these are facts right here. So Bitcoin was on January 1st, 2021, 29,000. January 28th, it was 47,000. We know it dipped again, even lower than that. But a $1,000 investment by the end of the year would have, um, you would have had 0 0.034 tokens, which would be worth about $1,632. Um, so, you know, you would have made money right there. Uh, but this one's not as exciting as when we look at Ethereum. It was $730 on January 1st, 2021. On tw December 28th, before it crashed down with everything else, it was at $3,800. So I know people who bought thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of Ethereum, and they made a lot of money. And you know what's crazy is most of those people did sell it, which just goes to show you they know it's going to go up in value in the future, or at least they, they're betting on it. So that's 400% in 12 months. Are there other assets you know of that can do that? This is a whole different world. Solana, it was $1.53 on January 1st, 2021. On December 28th, it was $181. Unfortunately, I didn't get, on it, get in on it until it was about $100, and I even bought some well above that. Um, if you had invested just $1,000 in Solana's blockchain uh, back in the beginning of last year, uh, at $1.53, you would have had $118,000. Um, are we going to see Solana do something like that again this year? No, but a lot of the data suggests that Solana is going to continue to grow in value a lot over the next few years. And even this year, you might be looking at four or five X growth. So you have $1,000 and you want to have $5,000 at the end of the year, you could buy Solana. Um, notice I say could buy it's that's, you know, you'd have to do your own research, but, uh, I bought more Solana recently when the price dipped. So I can tell you that. Um, uh, so yeah, in Bitcoin, a hundred dollars back in 2011, it's kind of hard to see that on the screen, but that would have been worth $4.3 million today, which is why cryptocurrency has already created, um, a lot of millionaires and a lot of people who a big shift in wealth is occurring out there as people who typically wouldn't have the ability to get that much wealth in such a short amount of time are, are doing that. And then this was written on January 8, 2022. So recently, and uh, our gentleman here, the author Leo Sun says, it's probably isn't too late to hop aboard the bandwagon. I can tell you, in my opinion, it's still early to get on the bandwagon, even if you can only buy a fraction of a Bitcoin, not $500 worth. Um, someday you'll be thanking yourself, I believe. Um, so yeah, I zoomed in here just to see that 2011 Bitcoin was a dollar. So a hundred dollars would have bought you a hundred Bitcoins. It's a little less than $4.3 million right now because it went down, but price prediction from, I mentioned in the previous video for Bitcoin 
in eight years in 2030 is a 1.5, $1.6 million. So if you bought one today for whatever, $40,000, you, if that's true and that plays out that way, obviously that investment speaks for itself. So you get the idea. You could be sitting on some, you know, sitting pretty, pretty quickly in the crypto game. So what did I do? Well, I got back in, in 2014, I bought Bitcoin. I don't know how much, I don't remember. I was reading a Wired magazine. I was interested in it. I bought it out of Circle K and I forgot about it. I lost it. I think I may have bought something online with some of it, but it was a code. I remember typing it in and I've searched my email and all my notes and everything. And I don't know what happened, but of course I look back then and wish I would have bought all the cards off the, the, the aisle. So then I waited till 2020 and like a lot of people, it was, I, I couldn't help, I couldn't ignore it anymore. And I did FOMO in a little bit. I bought at a time when I still, you know, now believe it's, it's a great time to have bought in. It's, um, however, I learned a lot as I watched the market experience its volatility and uh, I didn't sell, actually I haven't really sold any crypto. I've traded it into stable coins and reinvested it, but I haven't cashed any out because I live in California and we have crazy taxes here. So it's, uh, you have to really have a reason to pull it out and have a lot of money from your investments. Otherwise you're paying capital gains, half of it. Uh, I did buy Bitcoin and Ethereum. And uh, that is something that when people come and ask me, I say, of course, I can't give you financial advice, but many, many people, when they want to get into crypto, simply buy Bitcoin and Ethereum because they're the big heavyweights. It's like, investing in Facebook and, you know, Instagram, I guess they're the same company, but rather than maybe MySpace, uh, there's a lot of MySpaces in the crypto world right now. So you can't go wrong investing in Amazon back in the day. We only knew it was going to go up. Well, not everyone knew, but we now know it was only going to go up. I did more research and I decided that the layer one smart contract platforms or SCPs like Ethereum are the way to go. They're safer. They don't produce the massive gains, crazy stuff, but they're amazing assets uh, when you look at them. So, and then more recently, you know, not only Ethereum, but Solana, which is a layer one smart contract platform. And then I started investing in those other things I mentioned previously, layer two solutions like Polygon that make Ethereum work better. And then small cap gem hunting, which means looking for new cryptocurrencies, new blockchains, and reading a lot about them and finding out about their team, not just from their marketing, but from the analysts and um, looking for those big gains. And then now I'm being patient and I'm not panicking because you haven't lost any crypto if you don't sell it. You only lose money when you're trading it you know, and cashing it out. So once you purchase it, it's better just to hodl, at least in my opinion, in my approach. So I'll go through this pretty quickly, but in my particular bags or the stuff I own, Ethereum is the, the biggest chunk and I'm staking half of it. So I'm earning interest on it. It's only 5%. Uh, you can get a lot more than that out there in the crypto world. Polygon Matic, because it's connected to Ethereum and I believe deeply in Ethereum based on my research, uh, helps make it work better. And then Solana is a layer one blockchain and it's a competitor to Ethereum. Some call it the Ethereum killer, because everybody's looking at these different layer one competitors and wondering who may end up doing better than Ethereum. But that's years away if that does happen. And if it happens, that's fine because there's going to be room in this space for more than one player in that in the layer one um, battle, if you will. But Solana for me is a hedge or in other words, an, another little bet on the side, just in case Ethereum doesn't do as well in the long, long run. I know that you know, if you buy it now, it's going to go up in value. At least I feel strongly about that. But if Solana does better, great. I've got Solana as well. Both layer one contracts, smart contract platforms. Um, and then Polkadot is a parachain. And I think it's fascinating from what I read. I'm not going to go into that now. We'll talk about that later. It does connect different blockchains together. Then you've got Bitcoin. It's the best. Why is it number six? As I talked about previously, I don't have a lot of money to buy Bitcoin. So I'm trying to grow my investments in the other in the altcoin world and then a good strategy is to then put that money in bitcoin because bitcoin is like your bank it's like your gold locked away underground and then engine coin is just interesting to me it's the only metaverse or gaming uh, token i've purchased or, or cryptocurrency and i plan on 
buying more into that particular area because if you want to make a ton of money in a short amount of time, you got to look for the stuff that's going to blow up and there's going to be tons and tons and tons of, of growth and um, you know, development in this particular area of blockchain technology. And then Chainlink is an Oracle and Oracle simply help move money around in, in between different things. So like if you're using a visa over in Europe, that visa place you're at, wherever you're scanning your card, probably has to use an Oracle to communicate with the larger world of finance. And of course, in the digital asset world, that's a need as well. We have different technologies. They need to work together. So these are my bags, putting it out there. Um, you know, someone may criticize me for these, but I think most people who know what's up in crypto would say, yeah, makes sense. Pretty boring. I drive a Honda Accord. What am I going to say? <laughs> so I think I tried to do this slide over again. We'll skip this. Um, so there they are again, just in a little more simplistic format. Larger positions for me in Ethereum, Polygon, which kind of goes with Ethereum, as I mentioned, Solana. So really, I'm invested in two big layer one smart contract platforms, Ethereum and Solana, ETH and Sol for short. And then Polkadot, Bitcoin, Engine Coin, Chainlink, uh, smaller positions in those. I like the technology. I just want to be, I want to own, I want to be an owner. I want to be part of it. And I do think that they're going to grow and it's going to be exciting. So I'm hodling. I'm just holding on. Another pump is anticipated this year, maybe even soon. Um, with Ethereum and all other major blockchain assets going up to new all-time highs. And then we anticipate a crash. It, that's, <laughs> it's strange. When I learned about how this works, it's like, well, why would everything go up in value and then crash again? It has to do with the human mind, emotions. It has to do with the way this technology works. Amazon at one point, the Amazon stock crashed 95%. People sold. Um, Bezos didn't sell. He hodled. Uh, and he believed in it. So if you believe in something, you can hold on. What else am I doing? I'm learning and I'm saving up powder. Powder comes from the old British thing where, uh, you know, they'd save a bunch of gunpowder and they, the captain of a ship would use his extra money to buy gunpowder and have extra and they could practice with it. And then when the time came and they had to go into battle, they were ready. When the prices drop, when we see, when we hear that, hey, there's an indicator, there's a signal in the technical analysis, and it looks like this is about to pump. Um, you want to you want to buy stuff and main thing you want to do is want to buy the dip and right now we're in a dip So if you're just saying oh my gosh crypto looks cool. I want to get into it uh, Yeah, this might be the time to use some of that filthy fiat and buy Finally investing in safe bets while the market is down So I am dollar cost averaging into ethereum solana But i'm also saving up a little extra powder on the side to look for those hidden gems those metaverse gaming tokens that could 100x they could go a thousand x so a small amount of money could turn into a small fortune and people have put a thousand bucks and made a million dollars on some of these kinds of things i think if you get too focused on this it's a mistake to get rich quick you know how that usually ends but this is legitimately a possibility to take a hundred dollars and turn it into ten thousand bucks or and then up the you know, up the ante, if you will, and think about how that's exponential if you're putting, you know, $100, $1,000, So as James from Invest Answers a channel likes to say, you've got to learn to run into the building when it's burning and while everyone else is running out. So when it looks bad and the prices, you know, it's dropping and no one's talking about it and everyone's making fun of you at the dinner table, that's when you want to double down. And so what's next for me in the big picture, like I've said before, I want to make money from projects like Ethereum and other altcoins. Um, I don't plan on selling my ETH anytime soon. And when that time comes, I'll share that. Um, and then I want to, you know, at some point you can pull out some money, you know, buy stuff. Maybe I'm going to spend money on my kid's college, but the vast majority of that needs to go back into Bitcoin because Bitcoin is going to go to a million dollars eventually. Um, and I'm, maybe not a 100% Bitcoin maximalist, but once you understand the technology, once you start listening to people who are, you know, heavy hitters who are investing in it, you can't deny it. And it's why some countries are switching over to Bitcoin as their currency. Uh, it's got a long ways to go, and I don't think it's going to replace the dollar or any other fiat necessarily, but it's changing the world. It's already changed the world. Bottle, lower risk. It's boring in the short term, high rewards in the long term. 
And then in that shorter term, keep on learning, find those micro cap gems. If you got a hundred dollars, I mean, Hey, some of us are spending hundred dollars to go out to dinner once in a while. Um, I know every time I go out with my kids, I regret it. I could probably spend a hundred dollars on something a lot better than a dinner with the whole family. And don't get me wrong. I love going to dinner, but a hundred dollars turning into 10 grand, that does make you want to think twice about the uh, risk to rewards that are, that exist out there. So yeah, I might take a risk on one of those and I'll share what I'm looking at on here. And I think it'll be fun. Uh, upcoming class sessions, what is market cap? It's very important to understand what market capitalization is. Um, if you know the market cap, some people say, oh, you know, what is it, Dogecoin or uh, whatever the other one is, uh, Shiba Inu is going to go to a dollar a coin. It, it could happen, but if you look at the market cap, you got to look at how many trillions of coins are on the market. So that means that a lot of people would have to invest in it, like billions of people. So sometimes it's just a simple math calculation and you can look a lot smarter in terms of price predictions. Altcoin overview for beginners. I want to dig into these altcoins. I want to look a little more specifically. Why is Ethereum so cool? What the heck does it do? That's coming up. So I don't know how to make myself reappear on the screen here. And that might be something that doesn't bother you. So uh, start webcam. There we go. Well, I will see you next time. I'm really grateful uh, for those of you who are supporting this and just, you know, I don't have any way to make money off it. Um, but if you like this, subscribe to uh, the channel so you can see my upcoming videos. And uh, I challenge people, throw some comments in the chat, ask me questions. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on stuff. Like I said, I want to learn. So, all right, Mr. Todd signing off. Take care, class. Be good out there. Don't do anything I would do. Like invest in some crazy meme coin. Take care.